The fresh stage begins immediately after the heart stops beating. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we'll be looking at the most fascinating stages of the decomposition process that unfold after a person dies. Now, in order to understand why somebody gets very stiff with their muscles post death, we need to have a look at how muscles contract. Cells start to break down. As living beings, our hearts continuously pump blood throughout our bodies, transporting oxygen to cells and taking away their waste products. Blood goes from one heart pump to the lungs, back to the second heart pump, which sends it to the body, and then back to the first pump. However, when a person dies, their heart ceases to function, leaving cells with no means to eliminate their waste. This causes a toxic buildup that greatly increases the acidity within the cells. Once this occurs, certain internal membranes start to rupture, allowing enzymes to be released and roam freely. In necrosis, there is a loss of integrity of the wall of the cell, which leads to swelling of the cell's contents as well as disintegration of small bodies of the cell. These enzymes initiate a process called autolysis in which they digest the internal structures of the cells, essentially consuming them from the inside out. It also breaks open capillaries, releasing blood cells that turn the skin a pale purple. This typically starts off in the liver and brain a few minutes after death, before spreading throughout the rest of the body. Burst of brain activity. Many people who have had near-death experiences often describe seeing their entire lives flash before their eyes or having an out-of-body episode just before they're resuscitated. Images of childhood come back to you. You're selling lemonade on the street outside your house. Then you're a teenager holding hands with the person who was your first love. For decades, this phenomenon baffled scientists as they believe that brain activity essentially stopped along with the heart. However, studies have shown that for a brief period after death, the brain experiences a sudden surge of electrical activity, sometimes exceeding the level seen during the normal waking state. This may result in a state of intense hallucinations, which can last up to five minutes in some cases. The dying patient's brainwave patterns appear to correlate with those who have had a near-death experience. This suggests that the body enters a heightened form of consciousness immediately after death, before eventually giving out completely. Am I merely seeing nerve cells firing and brain waves being active, or do they have a functional meaning and they let us perceive these memories and recalls? That to me is the biggest question. Body temperature drops. It is well known that when a person dies, their bodies typically grow colder than usual. Without the heart beating, blood cannot distribute heat and regulate body temperature. This leads to the body temperature reaching equilibrium with the external temperature. This process, which is recognized as the third stage of death, is referred to as alger mortis. In a living human, body temperature is controlled by the hypothalamus, located within the brain. The hypothalamus is a small region situated directly above the brainstem. But after life ceases, the body temperature gradually decreases until it aligns with that of the surrounding environment. Usually, this cooling process occurs at a rate of 1.5 degrees Fahrenheit per hour. However, the speed of this decline also depends on a variety of factors, including the environmental conditions, the type of clothing worn by the deceased, as well as any underlying diseases. Bloating. The human body is populated by millions of microorganisms, largely composed of bacteria. And it's not just bacteria. We're home to populations of viruses, fungi, and archaea, too. These microbes are sometimes beneficial to us and are prevented from causing infections by the immune system. So what happens when this system no longer functions? In a process known as putrefaction, the bacteria begin to consume the body tissues and produce gaseous compounds such as methane and ammonia as byproducts. There can be cases of infections and inflammations already found in the body that will speed up the process of putrefaction. These gases build up within the body, causing it to bloat, primarily in the abdomen and chest areas. Additionally, as some of the bacteria attack the blood cells, it results in the production of a greenish molecule which accumulates and causes a discoloration of the skin. He's quite the guy despite the fact that he's blue. <laughs> Moaning and groaning. Hearing the dead make audible noises is something that would definitely freak most people out, but surprisingly, it is a relatively common occurrence. And especially when we're, uh, you know, really washing it or embalming and you're putting some pressure on, you can push it and you hear this. <sighs> Much like zombies in a work of fiction, corpses can actually let out moans and groans long after they're dead. This phenomenon occurs due to the presence of air in a person's lungs at the time of death. When the body is moved around in a certain 
certain manner, this trapped air could be released through the vocal cords, creating sounds that resemble moans or groans. So because it's sucking air through it, it's bringing air in through the voice box and it's making all that noise. This commonly happens with individuals on whom medical personnel tried resuscitation, but it could still occur even if no such efforts were made. I just stopped what I was doing because, oh my God, I thought I was hurting the person. Nails and hair appear to grow. You might be familiar with the notion that after a person dies, their nails and hair continue to grow. While it may seem true at first glance, it's not at all accurate. Factoids with creep factor are always fun to repeat, especially around the campfire. But this often repeated statement is not what it seems. The process by which these body parts grow require a significant supply of energy from glucose. Cells at the base of the hair follicle rapidly divide to make new cells to grow hair. But they need energy. Energy comes from burning glucose. When a person dies, however, this energy source is no longer available, and as a result, nail and hair growth effectively cease. However, the reason why this misconception has become so popular is that after death, the skin becomes dehydrated and shrinks. This causes the nails and hair underneath to become more prominent. And morticians actually have all sorts of creams and plumpers to combat dehydrated skin. You may still relieve yourself. Located in the bladder and bowels are certain sphincters that allow you to control the release of pee and poop. These two vital organs work together to get rid of waste products, and we need them to function optimally so that we can function optimally. However, shortly after death, all the muscles in the body, including these sphincters, undergo a process called primary flaccidity, in which they become relaxed. As the pressure increases, bodily fluids and gases push out of any orifice. As a result, any urine in the bladder or feces in the rectum will pass out freely. This may not happen as forcefully as during a visit to the restroom as the muscles that help push out waste will also be relaxed. It is worth noting though that this involuntary release doesn't happen in every deceased person. According to most morticians, it occurs in only around 20 to 50% of corpses. So the actual answer to the question, do corpses soil themselves, is yeah, they, they sometimes do. Liver mortis. When a person dies, their heart stops functioning, and circulation of blood throughout the body effectively ceases. Without the pumping action of the heart, blood remains stagnant within the vessels. It pools wherever the forces of gravity is strongest. About 20 to 30 minutes after death, gravity slowly causes the blood to pool at the lowest points of the body. This results in the characteristic pale appearance of corpses when they lie face up. Roughly two hours post-mortem, the pooled blood causes large purple splotches to appear at the bottom of the body. The normal color of liver mortis changes from red to pulp purple as oxygen gradually disassociated from the hemoglobin. This phenomenon is known as liver mortis, and it serves as one of the observable signs of death. In some cases, coroners also use liver mortis to estimate the approximate time of death. So that will give us the full amount of time that this person has been dead. So that is 29.02 hours since they died. Rigor mortis. Following the initial relaxation of the body during primary flaccidity, the muscles in the body undergo a series of chemical changes that lead them in the complete opposite direction. This phenomenon is referred to as rigor mortis, another observable sign of death. Now this is a Latin term, rigor means stiff, Mortis means death. Rigor mortis usually sets in between two to six hours after death, causing all the muscles in the body to contract and become stiff. While I'm washing uh, the deceased, um, I'll massage all the muscles and the joints and move them. It's a common misconception that this process begins immediately after death and stays permanently. In reality, however, it typically lasts for several hours before the muscles eventually return to their relaxed state, a process known as secondary flaccidity. By the time I've done all that and I come to dress them, they're quite loose again. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into settings and switch on your notifications. Skeletonization. The decomposition of a corpse typically starts with the aforementioned autolysis, where the cells are broken down by enzymes, and ends with skeletonization. Finally, in the advanced stage, the body will continue to break down. As the name suggests, this state occurs when all the soft tissues in the corpse have decayed or have been consumed completely, 
leaving behind just the skeleton. After 80 years in that coffin, your bones will crack as the soft collagen inside them deteriorates, leaving nothing but the brittle mineral frame behind. The time it takes for this process to happen depends on a range of factors, such as the temperature of the environment and the presence of insects. Overall, it varies from around three weeks to several years. Once skeletonized, the corpse can remain largely intact for decades or even centuries, making it valuable as forensic evidence or for archaeological purposes. A human skeleton expected to be at least 100 years old found by a family on their newly purchased property in LaFleur County. Which of these facts about death terrifies you the most? Let us know in the comments below. <laughs> Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.